Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for all your proposals. Um, I think they're very reasonable, very to the point, and um, frankly, uh, they all together, they uh, draft a program for action for our governments. Let me say, please, let, let me say just one thing about, uh, about us doing all this blah, blah, blah. Well, the blah, 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 uh, sometimes it's just a way to conceal ourselves and our uh, inability to, uh, to pursue with action and consistent action. But uh, to some extent, when you have these uh, transformational changes, um, it, it, it's actually useful to uh, convince people that action is needed, to convince people that the numbers are used here, 1.5 net zero emissions and so on, are not something that's been created by, by some artifact. These are science numbers, and people need to be convinced. Now, my, my sense is that now, uh, maybe I'm too optimistic and I stand to be corrected by the real guys here, um, my sense is that uh, the leaders are all absolutely convinced of the need to act and the need to act fast. And uh, what all these events, like, uh, like today's event, like the COP26, the G20, are actually addressing the question, how are we going to do this? Again, Seems to me that another, another, another thing that people are quite, people, I think leaders are quite uniformly convinced um, is that the fight to climate change is itself a fight for more equal distribution. I'm perhaps optimistic, but I, I don't think, I mean, here I stand to be corrected, but if you would discuss the value of this persuasion, most people would agree with that. Uh, the numbers I was giving before, uh, the, well, first of all, it, it's obvious in a sense because we grown-ups have created this problem, not you. And uh, the billions of youth, many, most of them are actually living in countries whose emissions are the lowest in the world because of their poverty. So the, the, the justice uh, dimension of this is absolutely apparent. It doesn't need to be elaborated. But now we are better off than two or three years ago. Uh, I see more conviction amongst the leaders. Let's not forget that some leaders had abandoned the Paris Agreement, not even, what was that, three years ago? And, uh, and so now they've changed. And I think we should thank President Biden for this decision. But next step is, how do we do that? So first of all, has to address the transition in an equitable fashion. And many of you, actually all of you uh, now, have said that this has to be inclusive. Inclusive means to include the poor, to include the most fragile, to include the poorest countries, and to include you. We cannot imagine anything being done in this, uh, in this field uh, without your participation to decision making. It's essential. These transformations, again, the size of these transformations is so huge that it, it cannot be parachuted over people like you, over countries like the poorest countries. So, the first step is uh, take conscience of what uh, we have done. And I think, to a great extent, that's been achieved. The next step is to be absolutely persuaded you need to act and act fast. And here is the real challenge. What I think your, your um, discontent, your um, possibly, um, I wouldn't say lack of trust, but certainly losing trust is, is caused by the slowness of this process, by the need to reach endless compromises, and, uh, and by the speed. We, the speed is of essence now, 
because again, science tells us that we have a limited amount of time. So that's the challenge, that's where we, that's where you will rate our efforts. And uh, we all stand to be judged according to what we do, first and foremost, by the youth. Now, what we have over the next few months is an opportunity, perhaps a, a tremendous opportunity. I don't want to say unique opportunity because I really wish that other events like this, the G20, the COP26, the United Nations work on this will continue, will repeat themselves year after year. But certainly the beginning where we can actually first reach a pledge, an absolute pledge of $100 billion for the developing countries, not loans, not loans, grants. Thank you. And second, come out from these meetings with a, a broad alignment of goals. That's another very difficult dimension because countries are very different across themselves. But we know that in this field, in the climate field, if the goals are not aligned, the targets are not going to be reached. So alignment of goals, which means that each country should share the same numbers, is very important. And it's very tough very difficult. There are specific issues in the transition which will make things even more difficult. If you look at the recent increase in energy prices, everybody's asking whether this is going to be temporary or, or persistent, permanent. Well, we see both, we see causes of both kinds. Some things that have caused this increase are temporary, but other things like gigantic transitions out of coal into what? Into gas. And they're going to stay for a while. And that means that energy prices are going to be staying with us, perhaps not at the same level as we're seeing today, but staying with us for a while. So we have to reorganize our societies around this, uh, uh, this uh, difficulty, this challenge that we have to but let me now finish saying only that uh, this is going to be difficult. I, I feel that all the leaders are fully committed, the, but that doesn't, it's not enough. That is not enough. Action has to be laid down, programs, clear targets, and never forget the weakest and the poorest in all this. Thank you.